Welcome to something a little different. Welcome to the first edition of what I'm calling The Daily Code. It's going to be a vlog series. Me just talking about something. Think of it as a natural extension of Alicorn Talks, just in a smaller form. And just to show you how different it is, the first subject is a doozy. Over my Christmas break, I decided to fall into the disaster that is Fallout 76. Not by playing it, but the way, way overreaction to what Bethesda is doing because of that. What I fell into is a rabbit hole of what I like to call the anti-social justice gaming commentators. Most notably, a guy by the name of The Quarter... Now, this guy, The Quartering, if you believe what he says, and if you like his dulcet tones, all power to you. But he runs a website known as Exclusively Games. Their mission... <coughs> I wouldn't call it a mission, I call it a witch hunt. Is to try to take politics out of gaming and gaming journalism. You do realize by stating that mission statement and by even saying it, you're making a political skew, right? Politics doesn't necessarily have to be left, right, center, alt, extreme left, extreme right. Politics doesn't have to be that. Here's my understanding of what politics is. It's not Democrat, it's not Republican, it's not any of that. That's the easy stuff. That's the give me stuff. That's the don't think of it on the surface. Politics can be anything. When you give an opinion, like, I think Battlefield 5 is okay. That is an opinion. But when you add the word because of and you add a word like diversity and you say I won't play the game because of its choice to have diversity yes that is still an opinion but it is a political one. You then fall into a political category of non-diversity. You don't like diversity, which means you're going against the people that are pro-diversity. Meaning you've started up a another political debate of do you like diversity? If you say yes and you say you like it for this certain reason or this certain reason, it spreads into another web. It starts a web of small political discussions. 
you're separating yourself although semi-politically from the political discourse to say that you don't want political discourse. You want to know the best way to take politics out of gaming? It's to not bring up the politics when talking about games. It's not even reporting the stories that have to do with guys from EA saying that Dragon Age 4 will be more diverse. It's when those stories come up that you decide because they've come up not to report on them. Or when Battlefield 5 decided to have a disabled woman on the cover, instead of reporting on it and how people hate it, just ignore it. Throw it under the rug. Don't even say anything about it. Don't even talk about it. Notice, I haven't until this very video. I think it's fine. Does that make me a social just lawyer? No. That means that I don't care. It's not going to influence my buying decision whether there's a woman on the cover with disabled legs or black man disabled like myself in the game carrying guns. It's not going to influence my decision whether Dragon Age Red Wolf Rises wants to be more diverse, which, by the way, Quartering, if you've truly played the Dragon Age games and truly paid attention, diversity has always been at the center point of its storytelling. From the very beginning, you have a party member of virtually every race in the game. If you 100% it, you go through their entire home bases, their entire political systems, and even sometimes get embroiled right in the middle of political discourse. Politics has always been part of Dragon Age. It's essential to the game's story into the world building. It's not that they suddenly woke up and said, Dragon Age isn't diverse enough. Let's try throwing in more diversity. It's always been that way. But for some odd reason, we've decided for some ungodly point in time, for some reason I can't pin the origin of, to make every game a political debate. Are you pro-microtransaction or anti-microtransaction? Are you pro-diversity or anti-diversity? Are you pro-blood or anti-blood? Are you pro-big boobs or anti-big boobs? Us gamers on YouTube will turn the smallest thing, even if it's a nylon bag, into a political witch hunt, looking to burn people to the ground. Yes, we should, if there are bad business practices, call companies out on it. It is our job as consumers, after all. But when we make entire YouTube channels based on trying to keep businesses politically and anti-socially apparently in the right, we are no longer being consumers, we are being manipulators at that point.
if you want politics out of gaming, just don't talk about them. Don't mention them in the reviews. Whenever a company does something stupid that supposedly falls upon your very sensitive, very don't hurt me political ears, just don't report it. Just don't report it. Because it will bring up political discussion, but then if you did that, you'd have very little content. Funny how that works. So you need to do it. To keep yourself and your respective channels relevant. Talking about politics and gaming because game companies want to be more inclusive when being more inclusive should not be a business edict it should just be normal where's my disabled superhero where's my power rangers cameo with a disabled character helping the rangers if their only thing they could do is be a computer nerd for a one-off. Where is that, huh? I have every right to be a social justice. I want more diversity in my video games and entertainment guy, but I don't. Because I just want good characters. I don't care if they look like me. Or are included. But when a game does, or an entertainment show does, I appreciate it. I just wish the only way that disabled people couldn't get a television show is to be a butt of a joke, or center point for which jokes could be made, like speechless. I wish we could be taken seriously as a people. That's what I wish. I will buy Dragon Age 4. I will buy, probably, Anthem. That's up to the Gamefly gods. And I will play all the games that you think are social justice wrong. That you won't. Because you want to know what will help the video game industry if we decide to play and buy more games that we wouldn't otherwise normally wouldn't and talk about them as games as things of entertainment not literally have them sitting on shelves because of something that the PR thought would be a good idea who cares about the PR PR is that it's PR if you want to play the game, play the game. If you don't, don't. The guys from Battlefield 5 were right. Only they didn't go deep enough when they said it. If you don't like the fact that we are trying to be more diverse and inclusive and try to bring in the female gamer, And we're trying to express all matters of race, color, and creed without any discrimination. Because video games allow us the ability to do that. If you're not exactly down with that small little doesn't do anything to affect how the game actually plays bit of 
modernization, then don't buy it. Then I would have no issue with what they said. In fact, even though they didn't say it at that amount of detail, I still don't. Whenever you start a debate, no matter what that debate is, you're politicking for your side in the debate to be right. If you want politics to be out of games, here's a novel concept. Don't start the debate. Instead, find peace in your own nirvana. And that's the code.